A lot of you have been asking me about the low-cost carbon dioxide meters they are selling on AliExpress and other Chinese sites. So I've picked up a bunch and I'm going to take a look. First off, why would anyone want to measure CO2 levels? Well, for one, there is an increasing amount of data that CO2 levels are a very important factor in indoor air quality. Modern buildings are usually designed to be very energy efficient, which means well insulated, because it takes a lot of energy to heat or cool air from outside. The indoor air is often recirculated a little more than it should be to conserve energy. Obviously, if you have a lot of people inhaling oxygen and exhaling CO2 and very little fresh air coming in, this is going to lead to elevated CO2 levels. This can cause headaches, sleepless, and trouble concentrating. If you are using a space for working or studying, you definitely want to have a CO2 meter there. Because we inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide, CO2 levels in an indoor space basically give you an idea of how many people you are sharing air with, inhaling what they've just exhaled. In the past two years, this has been studied a lot, and it's become a weak but actually very effective proxy for infection risk. There is an expression, all models are wrong, but some models are useful. This is one of those models. Think about it like taking your blood pressure. That one metric is really a very good indicator for overall health. It's not perfect, of course, and there's tons of exceptions. All models are wrong, but it's a very useful metric. As tenuous as it sounds, CO2 measurements have become a very effective tool in gauging indoor air quality and allowing us to see if something needs to be done to improve that air quality. Or sometimes, in extreme circumstances, if that's a place we should avoid or leave. I've put links to various studies and articles in the description so you can see the data supporting this. And of course, I know a lot of you are going to remain unconvinced, and that's fine. This video isn't for you. Just don't yell at me in the comments. It's only a CO2 meter. Someone else using it to manage their personal risk doesn't affect you in any way. Now, there are a number of very, very cheap air quality monitors on the market that claim to measure CO2, but really measure other things and kind of guess based on that. Long story short, what we want is a meter with an NDIR or non-dispersive infrared sensor. Those are the ones that are accurate enough for our needs. The most popular consumer CO2 meter on the market at the moment is the Aeronet 4. It's very accurate and very well made. But at $250, sometimes $200 on sale, it's a bit too expensive for a lot of people. It is however something of a standard and if we are comparing levels with other people, we want to be able to match its output measurements. So I'm going to unbox these low-cost meters and see which ones have measurements that match the Aeronet 4, and which I think are worth buying. Now a lot of these are unbranded, so I'm going to write a number on them for reference, and you can match that number up with their link in the description box. This is AliExpress stuff, so the link could change at any time. I have no business relationship and no affiliate link, so if you can't find the model you're looking for, I probably can't help. Okay, now I'm going to charge them up before I test them.
Okay, I'm just gonna leave that here for 30 minutes to get a baseline. Okay, number 10 is 593 parts per million. Number three is 1,506 parts per million. Number 12 is 434 parts per million. Number 14 is 432 parts per million. Number 2 is 522 parts per million. Number 8 is 481 parts per million. Number 7 is 487 parts per million. Number 6 is 400 parts per million. Number 4 is 840 parts per million. Number 5 is 459 parts per million. Number 15 is 883 parts per million. Number 11 is 569 parts per million. Number 9 is 410 parts per million. Okay, number 13. On my phone, it says 600 parts per million. Okay, these are very close to our numbers on the Evernet. And these on the other side, it's very inaccurate, so I'm just gonna put it aside and let's go inside and take a look at the ones I put here. Okay, so these are the ones that were within about 50 parts per million of the Evernet 4 and tend to stay within that range. The Evernet 4 uses a very accurate NDIR sensor, not a VOC sensor, and it's kind of a standard at this point for community monitoring of CO2 levels. Anything that tracks well with the Evernet 4 is going to also be using an accurate sensor so we don't have to overthink this too much with our testing because remember that CO2 is just a weak proxy for infection risk. We only need a general idea of how much air in the room is being exhaled and re-inhaled. That doesn't need to be decimal point accurate in order to be useful. Think of it like a rule of thumb. You want to avoid places that are over 800 parts per million CO2, or at least think about a well-fitting N95 mask if it's that high. If you are trying to study or get work done, over 1,000 parts per, per million, I find I often feel a bit sleepy. Over 1,500 parts per million, go someplace else if you can. On the scale we are working with, rounding to 100 parts per million or so, in my opinion, not a big deal. You're also looking at other factors when you assess your overall personal risk. Your own health, vaccination status, is there hyperfiltration or other air treatment, are other people masking, is there a surge at the moment? CO2 is just one factor to incorporate into your personal risk assessment. It's important not to treat it like some sort of infection meter. It only gives you a rough idea of rebreathe air and that's turned out to be useful, but it's absolutely not a direct metric of statistical risk. Okay, let's look at our meters. Oh, by the way, this one, it's one I actually recommended in the past, and in the past, it was accurate. I've bought and given away a few, but this most recent one I got way, way off. This is the big problem with buying no-name AliExpress CO2 meters. Even if they're accurate, there's no guarantee that the factory won't swap out a cheaper sensor next week. Another problem is readability. Why? No one can read this. It's terrible. I can see it from here. For the same price, you can get something much more usable. This one is accurate and readable, but there are multiple versions of this with the exact same enclosure and display on AliExpress. Some are NDIR and fairly accurate like this one. Some use a cheap VOC sensor, and there are tons of problems with vendors being less than honest because there's no way to tell the difference. So while this particular meter is okay, 
there's no way for me to recommend it or link to it and no whatever meter you get will be accurate. The air hug isn't bad. This one is in Chinese, but you can still figure it out. I find it in English on AliExpress and then after I got it for testing, they stopped selling it. It's accurate, but it takes two minutes to start up. Not so helpful. But if you find it for very, very cheap, it's okay-ish, but not really recommended. This is the Qingping Air Monitor Light. It is accurate, or at least it closely matches the Aeronet 4, which has a good reputation for accuracy. It's Apple HomeKit compatible and measures CO2, PM2.5, PM10, temperature, and humidity. It's about $100 quite a bit less than the Evernet, but like the Evernet, a little chunky and hard to pocket, and the battery life isn't as good. But it is a good alternative because of the cost and extra functionality. Even though this one was off by over 100 parts per million, I'm still recommending it as an option because it's the smallest sensor and very inexpensive. This is the Sensivron gadget. See, it's just this little USB stick and you can plug it into any USB battery and connect to it over Bluetooth. And here is its app, which tells you what the CO2 levels are. It's very handy, even if it's off by 100 parts per million or so today, it tends to be a little closer, and I think overall at $60 is still a good contender. I usually have a USB battery with me for my phone anyway, so this is very easy to throw in my bag for situations where I want to check air quality. Okay, this one has been making the runs, labeled as the mini CO2 detector or the white light CO2 monitor. It is accurate, it stays within 50 parts per million or so of the Aeronet 4 usually. I like it, it costs about $60. If you are in Canada, you should buy it from my friends at Donate Mask Canada. They do great work giving away N95 masks to those that need them and certainly are people to support. If you aren't in Canada, I'll put some alternative buy links in the description box. Last word, this is of course the Aeronet 4. It's very well made, the battery lasts for months with the e-ink screen, and it's made in the EU, not China, and always good to support local manufacturing. Most of the time, it costs around $250. Sometimes it goes on sale for $200, in my opinion, that's a great value, and if you can afford it, the one you should get. If you are looking primarily for a travel device, mostly at home or in the office, the Qingping Air Monitor Lite is very high quality, has an app and good online functionality. But even though it's about the same size as the Evernet, it's even less pocketable. You can travel with it, just not very comfortably. It might pair well with the Sensivion gadget, Qingping for home, Sensivion for travel. The Sensivion is also the best bet for one bag travel and digital nomads because of its small size. I think for most people, going to and from work, spa checks in restaurants and events, the mini CO2 detector aka white light is a good balance of size, price and accuracy. And my topic for CO2 monitor under $100. Okay, that's it for today. I'll put links for all the recommended units in the description box. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. Until next time, remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.